Good morning, everyone. Well, we're waiting for others to get in and get settled. Now's a good time to grab anything you need to get comfortable. Maybe it's a glass of water or a hot cup of tea or coffee. I even have my jacket and a and a and a scarf. Maybe you want a blankie. Also, if you have items at home and you'd like to smudge with me, now's a good time to grab those items as we begin to ignite the healing within. If you don't have smudge at home relatives, that's okay. I'll send some cleansing energy, some healing energy your way. It's Friday. It's another sunrise, another moon phase, another opportunity to start again, start fresh. Can set our intentions for the day. Aloha, kakahiaka. Hello and good morning. My name is Malia and I'm a community healer at the Her Wellness Institute. We are a nonprofit organization that focuses on the mental health and wellness of our relatives of Turtle Island, as well as other indigenous and underserved communities and also victims of crime. You can join us here every Monday through Friday where we will always breathe, stretch, explore ways of integrating self-care and wellness into our daily lives, and we will always honor our cultural traditions, our customs, our ancestry, our strength and resilience. So thank you so much, relatives, for joining us this morning. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our Her Wellness Institute team member who is here with us. We have our social work intern, John Yang. Good morning, John, how you doing? When you see the Her Wellness Institute commenting this morning, that is John. Know that John, as well as myself, on all of our team members and including you relatives, all have our different healing gifts and our different talents that were given to us by the Creator. And right now here, as we gather together, we are practicing community activated medicine. This was developed and coined by our CEO and founder, Leah Denny. For those of you who don't know Leah, she's an outstanding human being and extremely passionate. This is her life's work to make sure that we have ways that are accessible for us to focus on our mental health and wellness as indigenous people, as relatives, as Turtle Island people, um, and at really any color of the rainbow, no matter where, you from, where you're from, whatever your geography is, whatever your tribe, clan, or chiefdom, whatever your ancestry is, when we come here, we come together, sorry, we come together in a way of wellness. And when community activated medicine means that the people are the medicine, what that means is right here, right now, we have the ability to lean into each other for healing, wellness, and self-care. And not only do we have the ability to heal and support each other, that means with when, within our own heart, our own mind, our own body, and our own spirit, we have the ability to do our own part of our healing as well. I know that in a Western world, that sometimes things are not quite that way. We don't focus on wellness through culture. We don't, as Western people, necessarily focus on health through communicating with other people. Wellness is also the way that we connect to spirit, the way that we connect to each other. 
And that's what we're here for today, to reflect on who we are, the strength and resilience of who we are, the beauty of who we are, and to honor ourselves and to honor our needs in whatever way you see fit. fit. This is your lives, relatives. This is our lives. We are each individuals of over 7 billion people in the world. And the beauty of it is, is that our path is our path specifically. We are the captains. We are the masters. We are the leaders. We are the ones who are ultimately driving on this path and journey of our wellness, self-care, mental health, which is also synchronous with our path of life. So thank you all so much for joining us this morning. John says he's doing well today. I want to check in with you relatives. How are you doing today? How are you feeling today? And I want to encourage you, whether you're new to these videos or you've been here from the beginning, you can always comment. You are encouraged to comment. You are welcome to comment here. You can let us know how you're doing. You can even ask questions or just share your own cultural insight or your own wisdom. And if you don't want to share, that's okay. You absolutely can, but you don't have to. But take a moment to take stock of where you're at today for yourself. Perhaps you have some feelings that are weighing heavy in your heart or some thoughts that are in your mind that keep surfacing. Maybe even your body is feeling pain or discomfort or tension somewhere. Let's take stock of how we're feeling and where we're at and what's on our mind so that we can decide how we're gonna move forward today in our wellness path. And while I'm giving you a moment to do that, I'll share how I'm feeling today. Today, I'm feeling sad. That's how I'm feeling today. I am, I'm feeling sad. Um, there's some things in life that I need to let go of. And I'm struggling with that. I know it's good for me, but I don't know if I'm ready to just let go to let go just yet but I know I should and so today I'm a little bit heavy hearted I don't feel like this every day but I'm definitely feeling it today so knowing the way that I feel today I'm gonna take stock of what does that mean? What does my day, how is my day going to look based on my feelings? Well, because I have these feelings and I'm not feeling the greatest today, I know that I'm going to be a little bit more gentle on myself. There's some days where I have the energy when I'm feeling great to bound forward and to move ahead. But there's some days that I'm not. So today I'm going to take the opportunity to be kind to myself. I'm going to be loving towards myself. Heck, I might even write myself a love letter. Good morning, Colleen. How are you doing? Let me try, Colleen. Wasta Giali. Good to see you, Colleen. How are you doing? And how's everyone doing out there? So, yeah, like I said, I'm not having a good day. I'm just sad today. And there's things I need to let go of, and I'm not feeling the most confident today. So I'm going to remind myself of all the beautiful things that, that make me who I am, and that make me feel special. Today I'm going to remind myself about what's awesome about me. Colleen says she's feeling good today. I'm so glad to hear Colleen. And for those of our relatives out there today who aren't doing okay, I will remind you every single time that we meet that it's okay not to be okay. 
The truth is, no matter what we're feeling, the important part is to recognize what we truly are feeling and not to pretend like those feelings aren't there. We want to be authentic and honest about how we're feeling because if we're not, then how can we move forward in an authentic way to serve our highest good and what we truly need? Jody, so good to see you. Aloha. Jody says self-love is where it's at for me. Took me a long time to get here. I love to hear that, Jody. Thank you for sharing. And I definitely need to hear that today. And for all of our relatives out there who are doing good today, when you're in those moments of strength, when you're in those moments of feeling like you got this, you got the day, those you are the relatives that we can lean into for when we need that support. And some days we are that person and some days we're not. And it's okay. That's the beauty of community activated medicine. Sometimes we can provide emotional support. Sometimes we need it. Jody, if you care to share, let others know. Um, if you want to, you don't have to. Um, what you do in your wellness routine that honors self-love? Are there What are the actions that you take? And what advice can you give for others who really are struggling with that? John says, Jody, that's super awesome to hear. So, or, that's awesome to hear. Self-love is so important. So anyone who is out there, relatives, if you're not doing okay, it's okay. But know that there are things that you can do, that we can do when we're not doing all right. It's okay not to be okay. But if you're not, what can you do? The beauty of it is the options are infinite. But if you're looking for something, I always recommend reaching out to someone that you trust, that you can talk to. Maybe it's a friend or a family member. Maybe it's a coworker. You can also call our CARES Warm Line. It's open every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can call or text, and you'll be connected to one of our CARES Warm counselors within 24 hours. Our CARES Warm counselors can provide you with emotional support. They will listen to you judgment-free judgment free relatives for real for real i know because i talk to our cares counselors too they can provide you with emotional support you can talk to them about what's on your mind maybe you're sad maybe you're angry or upset maybe you don't even know what you're feeling but you're feeling some sort of way and you just need to talk it out that's what our cares warm line is for you can lean into them. John and I know our CARES counselors personally. They're awesome. And they are passionate about walking alongside you on your journey of self-care and wellness. When and if you're ready, when you need to. Not only they can, can they provide you with emotional support, but also with resources that may be helpful to you, relatives. There are lots of resources out there. Good morning, Terrell. Happy Friday to you. Terrell says she's doing good, planning a busy morning, then a relaxing afternoon. Get it, Terrell. Good to hear that you can relax this afternoon. I'm glad you're doing well. This morning, relatives, I do have to say, I actually think I got almost eight hours of sleep, which is amazing. It's very, very rare for me. Um, I love my jobs. I work multiple jobs. Love them both. Love them. Passionate about them, but they are quite demanding, especially in the last, over the course of the next year, they're going to be. Um, I often work very, till very late into the night. Last night, I think I was in bed by 11 and I slept until 640. So that was awesome. That's not normal for me lately, but um, I definitely feel rested. And so I have that going for me today. 
Zed, but rested. So normally I do have the tea ready. I didn't do tea today. I just opted to sleep in, which is what I chose for my self-care and wellness routine today. And what do you guys have planned today, relatives? What are you doing for your self-care today? One thing we'll do for sure right now is we're reflecting and honoring who we are. We're going to do some deep breathing. We'll reflect on the moon phase and some positive affirmations before we go. Today is October 23rd and the year has flown by. A strange year it is, but another year coming to an end. So if you care to share relatives, let us know what you're doing for your self care. Um, let's go ahead and get into deep breathing. Now we do deep breathing every time we meet. And why is that? Because deep breathing is one of the most immediate ways to experience healing. If we have a racing mind, it actually slows the mind. If our heart is beating fast, it slows our heart rate. It can help bring us to our center and ground us. Deep breathing has actually helped me significantly with my sleep. Even though I have to stay up late to work late, when I sleep, I am sleeping, which is something that's been such a prof had a profound effect on me with deep sleeping. Oh, Colleen says she's making corn husk dolls. Colleen, that's amazing. I actually was just reading on how to make corn husk dolls. We have our Daughters of Tradition group, um, which is kind of like Girl Scouts for um, uh, uh, Turtle Island girls. And um, the corn husk dolls, Colleen, that's beautiful. Feel free to share a pic if you want to, Colleen. That's amazing. You are amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. So anyways, with our deep breathing, I often talk about how our Western minds, um, the way that we function in the Western world, our brains are sort of like the most active part of who we are. Physically, I think generally we're not as physical as we should be. Spiritually, we don't focus on that as much. We're focused more on, you know, material things and um, um, things that we have to do. Like um, a lot of it's financial, paying your bills. Um, um, your utilities, having to go to work or caretaking for our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our spouses, our significant others, our siblings. Maybe you're one of those people in, in life who, um, everyone kind of looks at you to, uh, be the strong one and sort of care for everybody else. But then what happens is you end up neglecting your own needs. These are some of the byproducts of, of living in a um, overly um, in a Western world where it's overly about our thoughts and about our work. Um, so the way that we can counter this is deep breathing. It does still our minds. It does lower our heart rates. And what that does is brings us present to the connection to our heart, to what it is that we truly want and what truly serves us. So. Um, when we have these moments of deep breathing, it does all of that. And also in those moments of quiet and in those moments of silence, we get to become present of our spirit, which is innately loving, which is always there. And so in those moments of stillness, when we are, are aware of our spirit and we become more, um, more conscious of the light that's within us, our spirits, that light within our spirits expands. It's healing, it's healing energy. It helps us to become um, more aware of the things in our life that we should have gratitude for, which are limitless and infinite. And as we have more gratitude about our gifts, about the gifts the creator gave us, about the gifts and talents the creator gave us, of the water that we have, of the roofs over our head, of the clothes that we're wearing, of the support we have in our lives, um, we become more and more um, grateful and we therefore become more and more um, healthy. We begin to heal. So um, I think you can share a pic, Colleen. Um, I think possibly you can. Um, on the comment section, there might be a little icon to share a picture, I think. 
There may or may not be. Um, but if not too, Colleen, always feel free to share in our um, Her Wellness Institute inbox because I would love to just love on your Cornhusk dolls. That'd be awesome. Um, no pressure, Colleen. If you want to, great. Um, if not, I understand. But we would love, I would just love to see them. I bet they're awesome. Okay, relatives, so let's go to our deep breathing. Um, you can sit, lay, or recline however you feel comfortable. Um, I'm sitting at my dining room table, so I'm going to put my feet flat on the floor. You can put your hands gently in your lap if you like, or you can put your left hand over your heart. You could also do um, what, what, um, what I've been taught as hand breathing. And um, so what we do is no matter which way you're going to put your hands or place your hands or rest them, we are going to breathe through the nose for a count of four. And we're going to exhale through the mouth for a count of six. And as we exhale, we're going to release any of those feelings or thoughts that might be heavy in our hearts or minds or any area of discomfort or pain in our bodies. As we breathe in, we'll bring in that healing energy. If we have busy thoughts, let's go ahead and bring that healing energy towards those thoughts. If we have pain or discomfort, bring that healing energy there. If our heart's feeling heavy, bring it there. Are you ready, relatives? As I breathe in, I'm going to go up the finger. And as I exhale, I'm going to go down. Here we go. Deep inhale. And exhale. 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 Let's continue to breathe as we roll our shoulders. We're going to move into our stretch, releasing any tension you might be feeling there. A lot of us have tight shoulders. Are your shoulders up towards your ears? If so, let's work on releasing some of that stress we hold there. We oftentimes hold it in our shoulders or our lower back or in our brow like this, pinching the brow. Let's open up. Deep inhale. Oh, you went yawn here. It's okay. Let it go. Exhale, release, roll like the wrist. Deep inhale. Stretching the other side, the shoulder and the upper back. Oh, that feels good. We're going to go ahead. And stretch now, bringing our arm forward, stretching the wrist and forearms. If you don't like this, you can roll your wrist or relatives. You can choose any stretch you want. It's what it's your body. You know more about your body than anyone else does. Trust it. Trust what it needs. Trust to what the stretch that you should do. Deep inhale and exhale, pushing down on that opposite elbow, stretching the tricep other side oh we're gonna look from side to center and let's double tap the ear towards the shoulder ear towards the shoulder and rolling the chin from shoulder to shoulder and we're gonna look down gently towards our lap and up towards the ceiling stretching the neck feels so good i love this one i feel it right in here how'd that feel relatives every time we meet i like to share the um my the, my ancestral teachings of the moon, known as Kiala Okamahina or the Native Hawaiian Lunar Calendar. That means the path of the moon. And in, um, in my ancestral teachings, there's a different moon for every day of the month. The moon that we're in today, we're in a very, to me, I'm very glad the moon phase that we're in. We're in a reflective phase of the moon. Um, 
we're in about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth day. We're in the eighth day of the lunar cycle. So, um, <clears throat> we are in the growing moon phase. We're about to get into the full moon phase in the next few days. Um, man, the months have been going by fast. The, the name of the moon today is Ole Kulua, which means we are in the second day of the absence of Ku. Um, there's about four days in the absence of Ku, so we're halfway through that. Now, what does that mean? Um, so Ku is a god of per, one of the four major Hawaiian gods, a god of perseverance, a god of discipline, a god of sacrifice for the greater good a god of like you know just striving like pushing hard to achieve what you need so that's what the moon was earlier this week now that we are in the absence of cool days uh, yesterday today tomorrow and the next day so it's quite the opposite whereas cool might be moons where we um strive for excellence and discipline like maybe run instead of jog or maybe you know call the doctor's office when we don't want to because we know it's better for us or maybe we give our children like the last piece of fruit in the bowl because we know our children need to grow. Those are cool moon types of things. So when we're in the absence of cool, um, it's much more a preparation time. So the energy that you use right now, um, for example, in, in the physical world, it would not be a good day to fish, at least according to my ancestral teachings. And it is also an unproductive day for planting. I know that we're in southeastern Wisconsin, so we're pretty much done with that season for the most part um, anyways, but um, it, if you're in an area where there's planting, generally in the, um, to my ancestral teachings, we would not plant today. Um, today is more days, whether you're a gardener or a fisherman or just focusing on your wellness and self-care, um, today is a day about preparation. It's readying yourself through rest. It's readying yourself for um, preparing for the days when the energy serves us to start moving forward with our goals, with our, um, with our action. So self-care today, and this really is great in southeastern Wisconsin because it's just rainy and dark and gray. Today, a self-care act might look like taking a nap. It might look like prayer. It might look like um, journaling or reading a book or just taking moments to reflect on the beauty of who you are and the things that we have to be grateful for. It also might be a time that if you have a goal or, um, or, or plans for something um, like um, a project or maybe just something you want to do for your wellness routine, it's a good time to focus on planning it out. What steps are you going to need? What actions are you going to take? What will it look like? What's the first step? And if you don't even know the first step, maybe just thinking about what is it that you want? What is it that you want and need in life? Maybe it's as simple as I want to sleep better. Well, that sounds easier said than done. Maybe it's you want to start cooking at home more. Maybe you want to focus on exercise for your health routine. It's time to fantasize about these things, to daydream about them, to plan, to decide what you want, to dream fearlessly about what your future looks like. So what will your self-care look like today, relatives? Today, I, um, I always Google affirmations um, when I'm at home. I'm at ho I work from home today. Um, and today, I have searched affirmations for letting go. Um, I'm not feeling too great today, and I know there's some things I need to let go of. So I found some affirmations on motivationping.com. 
And here's one for letting go of fear. I release all fear related thoughts and feelings and replace them with confidence and courage. I release all fear related thoughts and feelings and replace them with confidence and courage. Sometimes letting go, in fact, I would think probably a lot of the times, letting go is because we don't want to let go because we're afraid of what's going to happen when we let go. Maybe we're afraid of the unknown. Maybe we're not confident that we can, if we let go, that that will be okay. Maybe it's the fear of the unknown. I release all fear related thoughts and feelings and replace them with confidence and courage. And if letting go does make you feel uncomfortable or scared, or you don't think you can do it, that's okay. That's okay. If and when the time is right, we can now at least begin with the first step, which is just thinking of it, just even, even just contemplating. And let's replace those fear related thoughts with confidence and courage. Relatives, if there's one thing I know for a fact about who you are, is that you are strong and resilient. You are the result of the beauty and actions of all the ancestors, all of your ancestors who came before you. You have overcome so much. That's a testament for you being here right here and right now. You are courageous. And although it may not feel like it some days, you do have strength and courage. Whether you realize it or not, you've moved in actions of confidence and of grace. And I don't say this to be preachy relatives. I say this as a reminder to my own self. Let's release all fear related thoughts and feelings and replace them with confidence and courage. Let's have faith in the creator or in ourselves or both. Here's another one. I choose to let go of fear because it only keeps me stuck in one place. I choose to let go of fear because it only keeps me stuck in one place. If we were to go from that place of fear to the next place, what is that place? I know relatives that sometimes the unknown can keep us stuck because we don't know, is it going to be worse? Is it going to be better? Are we going to have new problems? But what if we dared to dream fearlessly and faithfully about what it is that we really want and what it is that we really need.
I choose to let go of fear because it only keeps me stuck in one place. Let's do one more. And I really like this one too. I like all of these. I choose to face my fear, acknowledge it, and let go of it. I choose to face my fear, acknowledge it, and let go of it. How does it serve us to hold on to what we know we should let go of? What is your fear? Do you have any fears? Maybe you don't. If not, then we look to you relatives on those days that those of us who are afraid, we look to you who are, are fearless to lean into. I choose to face my fear, acknowledge it, and let go of it. That doesn't mean that you have to act on it. If you know something that you're fearful of, letting go, you're like, well, if I let go, then, you know, this might happen, or I don't know what's going to happen. Even just acknowledging that, that you are afraid, that you do have fear of something is the first step, and that can be very powerful. Relatives, the beauty of our wellness journey, of our self-care, is that it is us who is in control only you can determine what is right for you, truly. That is your right given to you by the Creator, is to choose your path of wellness and what that looks like. And we can take that day by day. We can even take that by the minute. Moment by moment. I want to say mahalo nui loa. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, everyone. Mahalo mapono i kokino. Take good care of your body, your heart, your mind, your spirit. Aloha nui. Huge love to all of you out there. Before we go, there is a community survey link to this video. Please take a moment to fill it out. You just click on that link. It's completely anonymous and ask just a few questions. And it helps us understand how to serve you relatives and to keep all of our services completely cost and insurance free. We don't want your insurance card. We don't care if you have one or not. We don't want any money. All you need to do for your journey on mental health and wellness here at the Her Wellness Institute is to have the desire to walk on that path of self-care and wellness. You get to choose. It is your choice on how you want that path to look. I'll see you on Monday, everyone. Have a beautiful weekend of reflection, a beautiful weekend of, of self-care, a beautiful weekend of this, at least in Wisconsin, of a spooky fall weekend. Halloween is a week from tomorrow, everyone. Take care and aloha.